Ezekiel chapter number 11. God speaks to his people through the prophet Ezekiel to tell them of what he will do in future days. Verse 17 says that God will gather his people, assemble them out of the countries where they have been scattered. And the last part of verse 17 says, and I will give you the land of Israel. Ezekiel chapter 11. And we see God in the midst of doing that even now. God's gathering his people back to the land that God had promised them. Oh, so many centuries ago. God's people are returning back to the land of Israel. And one day, they will all be gathered there together. And Bible says there in verse 18, as the Lord continues to speak, to his people through the prophet. And they shall come thither, and they shall take away all the detestable things thereof, and all the abominations thereof from thence. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you, and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh, and will give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep mine ordinances and do them, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God. What we have here in these verses here in Ezekiel, and he repeats this a little bit later in the book of Ezekiel, is we have basically a description Of what God does. When a sinner repents of his sins. And trusts Jesus Christ as their personal savior. A process that we can call regeneration. What happens when a person trusts Christ as their savior? How does A change come about in a person's life that does trust Christ as their personal Savior. What makes the difference? He gives us a new heart. He gives us regeneration. And that regeneration, that word regeneration is defined as to affect a complete moral reform or to recreate reconstitute, or make over, especially in a better form or condition. And when we give our hearts and lives to the Lord Jesus Christ, this is exactly what God does. He renews us. He regenerates the dead or replaces it with something better. And he makes our hearts better. And he makes our lives better through the process that the Bible calls being sanctified or sanctification. God takes the soul of a person that is dead in sins and makes it alive again. The Bible says in Ephesians 2 and verse 1, You hath he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and in sins. Before we knew Christ as our personal Savior, we were spiritually dead. Physically alive, but spiritually dead. The doctor pronounced it. We were dead. But when we prayed, Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner, God made us alive again. Spiritually alive. And when a person comes to trust Christ as their personal Savior, the Bible tells us that they become a new creature. In 
2 Corinthians 5, 17, the Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. God makes us over. And it's the greatest makeover that could ever take place. It's better than the housing makeovers. It's better than the fashion makeovers. Because anybody can throw new paint on an old barn and, <laughs> and make it look better. <laughs> God takes our heart and our soul and makes it new. The prophet Ezekiel, he gives us this description here in our text tonight of, the, of this regenerative, regenerative process of salvation. The backdrop he gives us there is of God gathering his people together, as we read at the end of verse 17. Ezekiel explains to them that they will have all their abominations and sinful things taken away in verse number 18. Isn't that what God does in our life when we come to know him as our Savior? A little bit at a time, he takes out the sinful things of our life. He removes them from our life. Our sinful, our sinful thoughts, which lead to sinful actions, he changes. The sinful motives that we may have had, he changes them. The sinful friends that we had, he removes them, but God replaces it all with something better. And God would do that for the nation of Israel. God does that for us. All their idols and their sinful behavior, the Lord would remove from the nation of Israel. And he removes from us. Little by little, bit by bit, day by day, as we go. If we, are, if we are doing the process of being set apart unto Christ and unto God each day, we are becoming more like Christ each day. Therefore, the old things, as we mentioned in 2 Corinthians 5.17, pass away. They go away. God replaces them with things that are new and better for us. And he does this for the born-again believer in Christ. The Lord takes away the old sins, the old desires, the old ways of thinking and acting, and he brings in new desires, new behaviors, new thoughts, new actions. New way, a new way of thinking and a new way of acting. He also mentions there in verse number 19, I will give them one heart. A heart that is wholly given to the true God. Before we were saved, did we have a care in the world about God? No. no. <laughs> we didn't care if God existed or not. We didn't care anything about what he wanted. In fact, we rebelled against what he wanted. But when God makes us anew and makes us a new creature, he makes us of one heart. That term there, one heart, basically means a whole heart given unto the true God. A heart that's not divided. A heart that's not pulled in many different directions. As the nation of Israel's was during their time of idolatry. Their heart was split in so many different directions, worshiping so many different gods. They had forgotten who the true God was. And we can and, and we can see this, and we can see this performed if you're looking, even today. 
So many believers in Christ having their heart divided in so many different directions. The nation of Israel would not have a heart divided among so many different gods. The prophet Hosea in Hosea chapter 10 and verse number 2 says this of the nation of Israel. He describes in verse 1 of the nation of Israel as an empty or unfruitful vine. And the fruit that they would give would be to that of sin. He's, he describes the nation of Israel in verse number two. Their heart is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. He shall break down their altars. He shall spoil their images. As the nation of Israel went to worship idols. It seemed that when they got home from Babylon, after that 70 years there, the Bible doesn't mention them really going back to idols much anymore. God had kind of tamed them, if you will. And one day, they will be tamed completely. They will have one heart a whole heart, a complete heart, a healthy heart, a heart to worship the one true God. And we'll have that one day too. God's working on that now in our life. When we get distracted, God kind of, you know, <laughs> over here, <laughs> get back in line. God will make the heart of the believers fixed and resolved with nothing wavering. One heart that is sincere and a heart that is upright. The psalmist, the psalmist wrote in his confession of his sin to God in Psalm 51 and verse 10, he asked the Lord to be able to To be able to do this, he said there, Psalm 51 and verse number 10, he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. God will give us a clean heart. All we have to do is ask him. He will renew a right spirit within us. All we have to do is ask him. He will give to us again the joy of his salvation. All we have to do is ask him. He will be, he will be able to be and give us an upright heart. We also notice that Ezekiel told the nation of Israel moved by the Spirit of God, that the Lord would also give them a new spirit. There in verse number 18. Or verse number 19. And I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within you. A new frame of mind that becomes agreeable to the new circumstances that God leads us into. As our thoughts change, as our lives change, we need to have a compass. We need to have a guide to guide us into the new way of life that we will be living in the Lord Jesus Christ. Would God not leave us rudderless? <laughs> no. He will give us a guide. And everyone that has born, been born again has been set apart from sin unto God 
And God gives them a new spirit, the Holy Spirit of God. That dwells within the heart and life of every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're here tonight. We know Christ is our personal Savior. Everyone would have that testimony. So God lives within us. His Spirit lives within us. He is our guide. He leads us into all truth. He teaches us all things. So we are not clueless. We are not rudderless. We are not without direction. God gives us that direction that we need through the Holy Spirit of God. A spirit much different than the spirit we had before we were born again. Much different indeed. The believer walks, he walks by new rules and he walks by new principles with new goals and a new end in mind in his life. And a new creature cannot serve God without a new spirit. That's what's part of Christ making us new creatures in him. As we said there in, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Anyone who is born again is made anew by the hand of the Almighty God. God then, it says there in verse number 19, removes the heart of stone from our life. He takes away that heart of stone. The heart that's been hardened by sin. This hard heart would be removed from the believer's corrupt nature. The heart of the believer won't be hard and crusty and dead and dry and heavy anymore. It won't be like the seed that fell by the wayside in the parable of the sower or the parable of the, so or the soils in Matthew chapter 13 where Satan can just come along and snatch it because it won't penetrate because it's so hard. God takes that heart out of our life. God re what God removes, God replaces. The principle of replacement. What God takes out of our life, he replaces. Usually with something better. And in this case, he takes out our hard heart and replaces it with a heart of flesh. as it is described there. God would give the believers in Christ that heart of flesh, a heart of living flesh, not a heart of proud flesh or a dead heart. He would give us a heart that would be sensitive to spiritual pain and to spiritual pleasures or spiritual blessings. A heart that is tender. A heart that is a heart that is apt to receive impressions from the Holy Spirit of God. A heart that will listen when God speaks. And a heart that will act as God commands. And this is the work of God. It cannot be done by us. Those people that are trying to work their way to heaven, they still have that hard, crusty heart of sin that still remains thinking they're doing okay. Won't they be surprised one day? <laughs> but I thought I was doing good. And now I'm here. God's looking in that book of life and he says, my name's not there. 
course he is. God is looking in that book of life. And those who have been regenerated and born again are in that book of life. Those who are not, are not. And they will be cast into the lake of fire. Forever and ever. But those who are born again, God does this wonderful work. It's his gift. It's a gift of promise. He told, his, he told Israel here in, in Ezekiel, I will do this. The Bible says in Romans 10 and verse 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is part of that process of getting saved. Of being regenerated. It's a gift of God that is wonderful. That a wonderful and happy change takes place in the life of the believer. He has passed from death unto life. Through the process of being regenerated, made alive, born again. The promise that's given to all who would believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is a better heart. It's a better life. It's a change of condition. We were dead in trespasses and sins. Now we are alive unto God through Jesus Christ. We were headed on the pathway and the broad way to destruction. But we entered in at the straight gate when we trusted Christ as our Savior. And we follow that narrow way. That leads to life. I got off the Broadway, thank God. I took the exit at the straight gate and followed the narrow way that leads to life. And this change must take place. This regeneration must take place in the heart and life of a person if they are going to spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. Except a man be born again. He cannot see the kingdom of God, let alone enter it. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. The only way. is to be born again. And the only way to enjoy the blessings of being born again is to be made alive again. See, Satan gets us discouraged. He gets us sidetracked. He gets us off the path of righteousness. Gets us on the rabbit trail as we chase rabbits. Rabbits that 100 years from now would mean absolutely nothing. But if we're going to go to our promised land, the land of heaven, the spiritual Israel, if you will, then we must be born again. We must go through this process. See, the process, this process starts when we confess our sins and trust Christ as our personal Savior. And then this process continues as we set ourselves apart from the world of sin unto God every single day. We become more like Christ every single day. Doesn't happen overnight. Never knew anyone that it happened overnight. Not even in Enoch's life did it happen overnight. But as we go through this sanctification process here on earth, we can become day by day more and more like Jesus. 
becoming new. Being holy and pure and clean. Being obedient to God and his commands. When the trumpet sounds and the dead in Christ rise, we that are alive and remain will be caught up together in the clouds. We'll meet the Lord in the air. We'll be with the Lord forever. Process known as glorification. And the process of being renewed will be through. That day will be perfect. Until that day, we trust the Lord by faith to take us through that process of giving us a new whole heart. He's given us a new spirit. We just have to be obedient to that new spirit. He has taken out that stony heart of sin, performed a heart transplant. He's taken out the stony heart of sin. He's given us a heart of flesh. And our responsibility is to keep that heart of flesh clean from sin, to be unspotted from the world. As the last part of James chapter 1 and verse 27 tells us, we need to do. And if we do that, we'll have nothing to worry about. Because we'll walk with the Lord in the light of his world here in this life, and then he'll take us home to be with him when the time comes. And we'll have rewards that we will have as we stand before that judgment seat of Christ for what we've done for him in this life.